Hello serverless people, Enrico here. In this video, I will walk you through a particular example of Lambda at Edge. If you haven't seen my previous video about Lambda at Edge, I will leave the link in the description. Uh, and in the previous video, I'll show a quick introduction, pro and cons of using Lambda at Edge. If you want to see other similar content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I publish a new video every Thursday. All right, let's get cracking. I will use Lambda Edge with Node.js to programmatically define the origin from where my CloudFront distribution will serve the content. What we want to do with this example is to change the origin based on a cookie value, which is gonna be forwarded from the client from uh, to CloudFront and from CloudFront to the Lambda Edge. So let's first go through the full upflow, and then I'm gonna explain you what we're gonna build. So your client is visiting your website.com and when you're requesting your website, your website is deployed on CloudFront, what can happen is either the object hit the cache or the objects miss the cache. When they hit the cache, CloudFront is going to reply back immediately with the uh, cached object. So CloudFront is not asking to the origin to get the objects and then get sending back to the client. If on the other hand, CloudFront will forward the request to the origin. Since we have deployed a Lambda Edge in this CloudFront distribution, what will happen based on the trigger that we have set, I'm gonna show you how in a minute, but what happens basically is that every time there is an origin request, which means again, the object that was not found in the CloudFront cache so what will happen is that CloudFront is going to ask the object to the origin. We will trigger a Lambda function. The Lambda function will be triggered at Edge, which means from a CloudFront Edge location, which is the closest one to the user. What will happen here in this Lambda function is that based on a value or that we're going to set on the client side, we're going to inspect the cookies. And if there is uh, an origin on the, in the cookie, we know from which of the two buckets we want to get the content. If we don't find the cookie in the client side, we're gonna we're gonna send back a random origin between these two buckets. So to summarize very quickly, what is gonna happen is that if the objects are not cached, the Lambda function will check if there is a cookie value. If there is, it's gonna send the request to the configured origin based on the value of the cookie. If the cookie is not set, it's gonna get the object from a random origin. And then the origin is gonna send back the object to CloudFront. Now that we have all the upflow in mind, let's move to the uh, AWS console and create those objects. So let's start from the S3 buckets. We need to create two buckets. I'm gonna show you how to create one and then you can do the other one by yourself. So you call a bucket like my bucket edge example one you decide in which region you want to deploy the bucket and then you put block all public access and you just hit create same thing for the second bucket once we have created the s3 buckets we go on the cloud from distribution so we hit create distribution so for the distribution we need to set an origin in this case we're going to choose the first bucket since it's going to be our default bucket and in my case it's called enrico region edge one then origin path you can leave it blank you don't need you can yeah we're going to set actually um origin access identity. So we want the, the uh, bucket to be completely private. So we uh, CloudFront is gonna call the bucket. So the objects can only be accessed by a uh, CloudFront distribution and they're not accessible through the bucket. So we're gonna set yes. So use origin access identity and we're gonna tell uh, AWS to create a new one for us. And then we're gonna, also, we're gonna also tell to AWS to update our bucket policy. Otherwise we will have to do it manually. Okay, next step we need to uh, add custom header can be it can stay default, compress object, yes. Here I prefer to set redirect HTTP to HTTPS. Everything else we can restrict viewer access. Here this one can be, can set no. And this is the step we need to configure. So in this case, since on our Lambda Edge function, we are actually inspecting the cookies from the client, we need to tell CloudFront to basically forward the cookies from, the, from CloudFront to the Lambda Edge function. So what we're gonna do is is to select legacy cache settings. And here on the cookies menu, we want to include specific cookies and we're gonna add the origin cookie. Then we, we're gonna set later on the client. All right, that's done. We don't need any other cookies, so just leave uh, origin. And then here is saying, do you want to associate the Lambda Edge function? We're gonna do that later from the Lambda at Edge 
uh, menu here is like we can leave everything default and then you can press create distribution it will take like from 10 to 15 minutes so i'll pause the video for a second so before we move to the creation of the lambda function i want to explain the code that we're going to put on the lambda function so every time the lambda function will be triggered by the clown for distribution this is the code that is going to be run so we have to find the origin a and origin b which are the name of the packets that we have configured for the websites so it's enrico origin edge one enrico origin edge two what i'm going to do then is I will inspect the headers object. If there is a cookie value, I'm going to loop into the cookie uh, value and check if the cookie value has like origin A or origin B. Based on the uh, cookie that I find, I will set the domain name of the uh, origin S3 domain name to the origin A or origin B. So based on the value of the cookie, basically, I am modifying the S3 origin where CloudFront is going to get the objects. If, on the other hand, I don't find any cookie in the request, I would just send back using a random function, either origin A, so bucket A or bucket B, and then I'm going to return the request to the CloudFront distribution. So let's copy this code and create a new Lambda function. So you go on the Lambda function menu, you click create function, and we're going to call the function my edge function origin our runtime is, is a right like node 14 then we're gonna um or make all, always make sure that when you're creating like a lambda edge function to be on the north virginia region otherwise you will not be able to add cloud front as a trigger and then we need to create a role for the lambda function in this case and we'll look into uh aws policy temples and i'm gonna check if there is something with the for the edge function yes there is so basic lambda edge uh, permissions because Lambda Edge uh, functions need uh, additional permission in order to be triggered by CloudFront. So I'm going to just add this one and I want to call it like my Edge function role. And then I'm going to hit create function. All right, my function has been created. Let's just uh, paste the code and see if there are some errors. No, everything seems fine. Now I'm going to um, deploy the function. And also another extra step we need to do is to actually publish an, a new version because Lambda Edge needs the version in order to be triggered by CloudFront. It's not possible to use that, like the latest tag. So I'm going to create a, a version v1. OK, now that I have created the Lambda function with the version, the next step is to add uh, the CloudFront trigger. So go on the CloudFront menu. Remember the distribution ID. You will need it. In this case, it's the one with 4ND as the latest character. So I'm going to add trigger here. Select the trigger. I'm going to choose CloudFront. And here I should be able to find my distribution. It's not this one, it's uh, 4ND. Uh, cache behavior is going to be star. And in this case, we need to the choose the CloudFront event. As we've seen from the architecture, uh, let's go back for a second. We want to trigger the Lambda function every time there is an origin request. We do want to trigger the function when there is the uh, when the object basically is being cached by CloudFront. So here we're going to select origin request. Uh, if we wanted to trigger the function every time there is a request to CloudFront, we would have chosen viewer request, which is this part of the graph. So when the client requests the object to, cloud, to CloudFront, it's called viewer request. So we choose origin request, as we said, and then we're going to acknowledge that um, CloudFront is going to deploy the function in all the edge location of AWS. So I'm going to click add. So once I, I deploy the function, I actually found something missing. We need to specify also on the region, the region of the S3 bucket. So I added on the code uh, origin S3 region EU West 2 or S3 region AP South S2, depending on the uh, origin that we're going to choose. Same thing when we are choosing randomly, and then I send back the request. Another thing we need to notice is that since Lambda Edge are deployed into the edge location of CloudFront, when you use CloudWatch, you have to go to the region where the function has been triggered. In my case, since I'm based in London, the region is EU West 2. So if you want to check the logs, you have to navigate to the correct region. Otherwise, you won't be able to find the logs for the Lambda Edge function. All right, now it's time to test the code actually. So let's go on, this is the CloudFront uh, URL. So if I load that, I don't set any cookie, I'm just getting random uh, results. So in this case, I'm getting the website from bucket number one. If I set a cookie, 
For example, let's set, I'm, I'm gonna set the cookie directly from the console because I don't want to install any Chrome extension to do it. So I'm gonna use like this function document cookie and I'm gonna set as the region the packet B. So let's check, I, I've added the cookie. Let's go on the uh, console and as you can see, the value is B. So now if I reload the page, I should get the value from the packet two and it's gonna show website two, let's see. Yes, as you've seen, I don't know if you, if you have noted, but it took a bit more time because actually the bucket is in uh, Sydney at the moment and I'm based in London. So if I set again the value to A, I should get website one and it's way, yeah, it's way much faster. If I set again on B, you should see the loading for a bit, yeah. Well, now you don't see the loading actually because this is a second request, so the object has been cached. And if we go on the um, cloud CloudWatch logs, I I have console log here the request. So if we inspect like a random one, and we're gonna see here like uh, origin A cookie found, which is a console log that I put on the Lambda function. And here is the origin object that we set, we are sending back to the uh, CloudFront distribution. So it's like origin uh, domain name, this, the first bucket at region EU West. The first ones are like the random ones. So we should, we should be able to see like random origin like sometimes can be yeah south east sometime can be uh the other one so like eu west 2 let's see if i can find one eu west so this is like the random when when no cookie has been set a common error you can face is when uh, you didn't add the permission for CloudFront to access the second bucket because when we have created the CloudFront distribution we set the oai so the uh, origin out authorized identity only on the first bucket we, because we set the first bucket as the origin, but we didn't set the permission on the second bucket. So you will get an error like this one that I'm showing on the video. In order to fix this error, you have to go on the second bucket. You go on the permission tab here and you add the bucket policy with the allow effect for the CloudFront origin. So you can copy this uh, bucket policy from the first bucket you have created. Once you, you have added the policy, CloudFront is actually able to access S3 and it can send back the object to the user. All right, this is all from this use case. So we have seen how with Lambda Edge, we can modify the origin, turn the object to the cloud from distribution. I want to clarify, this is example has been taken from an AWS blog, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in the description. So thanks to the AWS team to put this uh, awesome blog post I wanted to explain in the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks everyone for watching.